welcome to Winchester News Online. I'm Hetty Maylam. Our top stories today. Southampton split over education reform. Every school is pitted against every other school. New eco homes built in Winchester. The council itself has taken uh, measures to reduce its carbon footprint. Frank Gray sacked as Basingstoke manager. The new boss speaks exclusively to Winnell. And the 40-foot Lego palace fit for a king. As Michael Gove pushes forward with his education reforms, opinion is split among Southampton politicians. The argument has created concerns over whether turning secondary schools into academies is a step backwards. Lewis O'Brien reports. With the education reform still at the centre of British politics, one city embracing the changes is Southampton. The city, which is known for its well-renowned university, has struggled in education league tables in recent years, with GCSE results falling below the national average. But the trend is now changing, with this year's results showing 78% of all pupils gaining five high-grade GCSEs. The City Council are optimistic towards the future. I think that the government are making some fairly radical changes, um, and that is the right thing to do. People that create this sense of there's some huge artificial divide, that says more about their politics, really. A school is a school. One key objective behind the reforms is the introduction of academy schools, including the new development of the Oasis Lord Hill School in the northern part of the city. The City Council is confident this scheme will continue, with 50% of all secondary schools becoming academies by the summer. But for one local politician, the scheme is a step in the wrong direction. The idea that every school is an academy and that every school is pitted against every other school with the education authority in the background just holding the license of touches on the whole procedures, I don't think it's going to be good for education overall in the coming years. The political debate in Southampton continues, but with the coalition government now cracking down unauthorised absences during term time, a child's education is still at the forefront of the political agenda. Lewis O'Brien, Winchester News Online, Southampton. A Basingstoke man is facing a prison sentence after being found with a taser disguised as a mobile phone. George Berridge reports from Winchester Crown Court. A Hampshire man was given an 18-month sentence on Monday for possessing a disguised prohibited weapon. James Kane, 36, from Basingstoke, was found in his flat with a taser that had been made to look like a mobile phone. Kane told police that he had been shown the weapon by his flatmate and had not intended to use it offensively. But the judge said that he was guilty as he had treated it as his own. Kane was already serving a suspended sentence when the offence took place. Judge Cutler said that he had used this time to get treatment for a drug addiction and that his work in prison would stand him in good stead. He also added, It is time for you to put this behind you and put your life in good order. Kane was given 12 months for possession of the weapon and six for breaching his suspended sentence. This is George Berridge, Winchester News Online, Winchester Crown Court. Two dry winters and some of the lowest rainfall levels in decades are taking their toll on the UK. I went to find out how this affects the Winchester area. At this time of year, you definitely wouldn't expect to hear about hosepipe bans, but here in Hampshire, the driest October to January period since 1992 is beginning to take its toll. Hampshire is officially a drought zone. Water companies are urging people to preserve water now. Here at the Vitacrest Beds in Warnford, the drought could be the end of the season's crop. If, if any of the Hampshire Crest farms were to dry up entirely, it would, I mean, it would be catastrophic for civilization, actually. Elsewhere in the south, reservoirs are drying up. This is Bullwater Reservoir in Kent, thriving in 2006, but today the water levels have dramatically fallen and wildlife is beginning to suffer. Hetty Malam, Winchester News Online. As Winchester looks to cut carbon emissions, two new energy-efficient homes have been built in the area. Daniel McCrell went to take a look at these unique houses. This may look like a regular home, but it is actually a zero-carbon home which means it can produce more energy than it uses. Back in 2007, WWF named Winchester as having the highest eco footprint in the country. But Winchester City Council have now set a target to cut their carbon footprint by 20% by the end of 2012. While these new homes are good for the city, is the council doing enough to tackle Winchester's carbon footprint? This site um, was a challenging site from a planning point of view. I think they just need to show a, a greater support for sustainable development, really. Winchester City Council believe that positive changes are being made. 
the council itself has taken uh, measures to reduce its carbon footprint and encouraging people in the district to do so as well. Carbon friendly buildings may not sit comfortably with a heritage asset and I think that's something that we should embrace and celebrate. With a new policy that requires houses to reach a minimum eco standard, the future looks green for Winchester. Daniel McCrell, Winchester News Online. Residents in Winchester may soon lose their old parking ticket machines. Winchester City Council is planning to replace some old machines with a pay-by-phone system that it believes will be more cost-effective. Our travel reporter Graham Marshall went to find out more. Soon, residents in Water Lane and Wales Street won't be able to pay by coin-operated machines, but will find they won't be able to park without a mobile phone. There will be a few people who will not um, be able to park there because it won't accept coins. But those people most vulnerable will have uh, blue badges and can therefore park anyway without um, paying a fee. Um, residents will have their own parking areas and a vast majority of um, car drivers will have mobile phones. It's a very simple system once it's set up. But some councillors are not so sure. There are questions over whether the plan is just the start of such changes in Winchester. My concern is that it's the thin end of the wedge and that we're going to end up with pay-by-phone parking throughout all the streets in Winchester. So I think there are issues. People have complained to me that it's difficult to register on the scheme. There are not only people without mobile phones, but people who on principle won't have mobile phones. Do they actually have all the rest of the things that you need to make this technology work? The plans won't make money for the council, but they're confident it will save money, around £3,000 in replacement costs for the machines. Graham Marshall, Winchester News Online. And now over to the sport with Tom. Thanks, Hetty. Basingstoke Town Football Club has announced that manager Frank Gray and his assistant Jerry Murphy have been released from their roles with immediate effect. Gray and Murphy have been at the club since 2008 and have guided Basingstoke to 10th in the table this season but a string of poor results has seen the Dragons drop valuable points. Academy manager Jason Bristow has been appointed first-team manager with Kevin Brabeck as his assistant. Bristow will take charge of the role for the remainder of the season. For a full interview with the new Basingstoke town manager Jason Bristow, log on to sportsweek.org.uk. AFC Totten have two games in hand over top side Brackley Town. A win against Evesham United could see them replace Brackley at the summit of the Evo Stick South League Premier Division. Lee Jarvis reports from the Testwood Stadium. AFC Totten's match on Saturday marked the first anniversary of the first game at the Testwood Stadium. And Totten couldn't have asked for a better start. Only seven minutes in, Nathaniel Sherborne timed his run perfectly to meet Michael Gosney's free ball round the keeper and coolly put Tottenham 1-0 up. But Evesham's best chance came at the start of the second half. Josh Quainer unlucky not to put his side level. But it was Tottenham who scored next. The Evesham defence caught napping from this short corner, allowing Sherborne to double his and Tottenham's advantage. The lead was halved with only four minutes to go. Henry Eves sliding in to make an interesting end to the game. 2-1. Substitution, AFC Tottenham the pitch, number 10, Daniel Sherbourne. Two-goal hero Sherbourne looking less than pleased at being subbed immediately after the goal. But any hope of a comeback was ended when Stefan Brown, Sherbourne's replacement, skillfully lobbed Platt to ensure three points would go to Tottenham. Lee Jarvis, Winchester News Online. And now to ice hockey. The Basingstoke Bison welcomed the Bracknell Bees at the Planet Ice Arena. With 11 games to go, the Bison were hoping to stay in touch with the playoff places. Henry Lewintit reports. The crowd was buzzing at the Plant Ice Arena when the Basingstoke Bison played the Bracknell Bees in what has become affectionately known as the M3 Derby. Joe Miller and Jacob Heron led the charge for the Bison, both having early chances. Captain Nicky Chin found the breakthrough of the Bison, putting them one win in front at the first break. They then had a chance to extend their lead, but Kurt Reynolds was denied. The Bees then got their first real chance for the game. Stephen Wool stopped the first shot and was swarmed by Bracknell players, but managed to keep the puck out. Victor Kabenko extended the Bison's lead, blasting this shot past Bracknell's goalie. Bracknell had a sting in their tail. 
and closed the Bison's lead with only three minutes to go. They went all out for the win and subbed their goalie, but this didn't pay off when Marcel Petran sealed the Bison's win with a long-range goal, ending the game 3-1. Henry Lewin Tip, Winchester News Online. And that's all from Sport This Week. Back to you, Hetty. Thanks, Tom. And finally, a Lego expert has placed the first brick in a scale model of the historic Basing House. The 40-foot model of the Tudor Castle will be Hampshire's first Lego landmark. Felicity Houston was at the construction site. Think of a building site, and you'll probably think of this. That. Or perhaps this. But... For one man, building is an entirely different game. Duncan Titmarsh, a certified Lego builder, is building a scale model of a ruined castle in Basingstoke as part of an attraction for the Milestones Museum. It's my full-time job. I build Lego model sculptures, mosaics all the time. Um, yeah, people think I'm a bit mad, but it is good fun. The model of Basing House, which will be shown in its former state, will take hundreds of man hours and over 150,000 bricks to complete. It's a great opportunity for everybody to come in and see it and enjoy it, watch it gradually being built and also it helps the museum get more people through the door. So it actually has a, not only a commercial element to it but it has an element of art to it as well. The build will take six weeks from start to finish, during which the public are free to come along and watch the castle take shape brick by brick. Felicity Houston, Winchester News Online, Basingstoke. And that's all from us this week. For more award-winning news and sport, log on to winall.co.uk. Thank you and goodbye.